Hi, I'm Denise DeFara. This video, there is two parts. The first part I will share about the finalizing of the last two in the series behind me. Um, the last vlog, number 27 I believe, shared about two in particular and then I showed you two that were quite abstract and I was going to make them something new. So that's what I cover in this video, the first half. And the second half is something I was, I've been holding on to for a little while and just sort of wondering about when to share it, how to share it. At first I thought I could make it private, um, but it just, what came to mind was that healing, women's health and all of those things are such a universal truth and reality that I thought, why, why do these things need to be a little bit hidden or why is there any shame about talking about such things? So that's where I've come to now and decided to put it in. But I, what I did was I put all the art discussion about these ones at the front half of the video. And then you'll see a section where it says part two. So you can choose if it's um, not what you're interested in viewing or you might come back to it another time because they're two different sorts of um, experiences. But funnily enough, it was in the middle of painting these two that I show you that the feelings of anxiety and fear that I was experiencing became so much that I couldn't really continue painting. So it's, this is, I actually share with you the process that I took myself through to then pick back up and be able to paint again, you know, a day or two later or whenever it was. So I actually think that my discomfort at maybe sharing something that some people might find too much information or whatever, I think that my intention to be of service and helpful in the arena of giving examples of how creativity can be self-healing because it's a way for you to hear yourself. So in a way I've called it self-hearing, self-healing. Those two things go hand in hand when we do uh, intentional creativity, which is often focused on trying to help you have a safe place for your thoughts to land. So that's what the second half um, I will be showing you from my journal page. So thanks for joining and if you enjoy my videos, I'd love it if you'd like and like and subscribe. Um, it all helps. It's really encouraging to know that it's reaching more people and it's really lovely to receive your beautiful feedback. So thank you so much that those of you who have um, taken the time to send me messages and put comments below. I really appreciate it. All right, see you next time. I promised I'd come back and show you how these two ended up. Um, I did fill in the cup, so made that those two talk to each other. The blue dragon's head shall remain <laughs> as some sort of interesting, it's like an interesting kind of shape that's talking to that bunch of flowers in my mind. I love how the um, framed piece in the corner is really looking like a kind of an abstract forest kind of painting feeling like going into a walking through a forest and the log on the ground and stuff like that so I quite like that there's a bit of a mystery in that picture on the wall and oh it's interesting yeah I'm seeing I've got abstract art sneaking its way into my work <laughs> by stealth it's arriving as pictures on the wall um, and so I have decided to leave that one like it is at the moment and um, hopefully it will find a new owner and I won't be um, tempted to come back in and change it again. Um, I did add the cup and so that's sort of talking to the napkin and so yeah it's got a lovely feeling like a after breakfast or after lunch even you might wander away and you've left your napkin in your cup. Um, so loving these two and yeah they kind of talk to each other through their little cups. So that's them finished. So all right, so I'll take these two back down 
but those will be the the friends of this week I think that I will be bringing um, taking somewhere new I am starting with this one and I have found this image on Pinterest as my jumping off point I'm really loving these black drawers and all these things collected on top and the jar with the leaves so um, I'm using that as a jumping off point and doing some pencil on the board bringing in some of these shapes and, and all the while thinking about what shapes of these that I want to use and not use responding to the marks that I've already got on here and um, I'll just take pictures along the way. I won't be showing the whole process because I then will be too conscious that it's being filmed. I need to just try and dive in and lose myself in the process. As I have a closer look at this, these drawers, see how they're quite rustic and interesting. So I really want to keep some of that or, you know, however it shows up, but bring some of that across rather than just paint a chunk of black and, and hope for the best. So I'm wondering about ways to think about that. The good thing is there's already um, kind of some texture and lighter color behind. I was wondering about bringing some very light gray um, crayon with the Neo color underneath these kind of areas so that when I paint the black over the top, I could use graffito and um, bring the shapes of these handles in that way. Um, so that's that's something, you know, like I want to go and be free and just play, but having a little bit of thought about what's coming first, what's behind, what, what will I want to paint first, all bearing in mind I've got all this happening at the same time. So it can get a little confusing, but... Um, Kind of having an image is kind of helpful to give you an end result that you're sort of heading toward. Even just the general idea, the general shape, and mine will look not a lot, nothing, what I want to say is not identical at all to this. It will have changes, but this is the pattern that I'm going for at the moment. As I'm working on this piece, I just, I had a whole lot of um, color and ink and everything in the middle here, and it was a big, dark, intense blob, and um, it just wasn't going to work. So what I um, thought to do was to pick some up with this tool and then just smear it over on this one, um, because I have a love of transparent paint. It really, I don't know, it just makes me really happy. It has for quite a long time, it just does. Um, so that's what I'm sort of after. I'm always after how can I keep the transparency and then trying to bring in, um, trying to bring in, I'm trying to do and think at the same time. Oh, that's interesting, making kind of shapes from the wet. I like that. Um, oh, I like it a lot. All right, let me just do this while I'm here. Oh, that's nice. I like it. Um, yeah, maybe that's it for the minute. Just letting you know.
I realize in this video there's an awful lot and oftentimes there is an awful lot of me just showing you what I'm doing and you can't see me. Um, sorry about that but it's sort of like I'm bringing you along on the journey and my filming abilities are not set up in the way that I can I I just haven't got it together yet with how to put a tripod in the right place and you can get that whole studio view and everything you know talk about um, video making goals maybe for the year to improve those sort of things but I think it's sort of for me as an artist more important for me if I'm watching a video as long as I don't get bored so I'm trying not to uh, when I edit I try and make them kind of more succinct um, some things warrant being slow form and maybe you can you can art along at the same time but uh, what I'm wanting to do is just bring you along on the journey and talk about the, the changes that I'm making along the way and maybe a bit about why I'm doing that. Um, so, you know, it can be really a slow process. So this one video could have been filmed over many days. Um, and if there's times in, the, in between. So, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to remember sometimes what I've filmed, what I haven't. So um, I thought I'd chat about this, the results of this, having pulled off all the, um, what's that stuff, the, um, the masking fluid. That's probably back to front there for you, but the masking fluid. So I've used quite a lot. It's almost gone now, um, but it's a really great fun um, tool to getting sort of nice random shapes. So I'll go back to showing you the pictures and um, discuss how I'm feeling about them now as we go. Okay, so here's these two and I'm liking having them, working on them together because then they can um, kind of inform each other. I'm loving how that one had that very anchoring black drawer, set of drawers there. And so this one has something similar. Um, I put these books down sort of on the table and I'm um, thinking about putting a cup. I have a nice cup here that um, I made this collage paper so I'm considering whether I will put a collaged cup in there. I quite love it actually. I wasn't loving it before because it was all very busy um, but that that makes me really happy. It is um, inspired by a Marameco painting, a uh, design. So I did a bit of collage and and because uh, I bought some Marameco fabrics when I was in Japan, and this one has me completely in love with it. I just adore it. So that's possible. Um, your eye really goes there. It's a very drawing. So I'll have to be careful that you don't just only see that. And then you, you you don't go over here. Having the awareness of distances and how it looks, um, you know, with the ch with the cup, without the cup, this could actually go down a little lower. I was using an image of, from Pinterest, which was a very plain table, um, and the big vase was sort of black, and I don't know what to do with the vase. This is the problem with me is I get really um, attached to these random marks underneath and I find it really hard to lose them because once you lose them, I mean, the life that they have gets lost and so you have to find ways to bring life in another way. I just particularly love the way that random marks like this are uh, so alive uh, and then that one there I, I have yet to come back in um, I'm not quite sure where I want to take this one because I really love the way it looks that sort of crazy oh I just love so much about that but it's lacking a bit of clarity and I'm just trying to decide is that a problem and I might try some different techniques on this one and not have it just see how this one I love that I got all this randomness of these leaves and that's quite yummy and I've done that 
sort of technique before and I enjoy it. Um, this one, there's less control and it's more loose of what I'm going for. Uh, the difficulty here, I mean, this is showing itself to be its own plant. This one here, I've been trying to figure out and I don't like what's happened. Um, that bottle, I, I think it's interesting with all these lines in it. There, uh, there was like a plate, a circle plate behind these things that I thought I could do with this colour. And so then I would probably, I was going to take away that strong line there. Because it's hard to say, what is that? Do we need to know? Or is this actually quite yummy with its drips coming down and that's just doing its thing? That's what I'm thinking about. Also noticing this foliage here in the image, they were quite crisp and juicy and yummy. Um, and here they're sort of getting lost because of that darkness behind. So if I wanted them to come forward, I would then um, push back those dark bits that are encroaching. But again, I love the randomness of those. So you can see how you can create there's a dilemma to be solved. And so what that's my question is how do I keep the looseness but bring in a kind of a design so that you, you bring the painting home. It's like, in some ways, there's so much about this that I'm loving now. I'm tempted to just leave it alone. But, and so that could be an option. I could actually start something completely else put these aside and let them hang out for a while and see what calls for them to be done next because I don't want to just push in and over neaten and lose this sort of magic that I feel is going on here. So that's my th thought process this afternoon. <laughs> mm, sorry, they're a little crooked, but there's the... Um... The other kind of pair, these I painted together. So often, yeah, I'm sort of doing them in pairs. Um, and so these were the last two that were abstracts. And then I've turned them into these kind of still life arrangements. Um, I, I, I think I talked a bit through already when I was in the process of making them, but this is the finished um, result. Um, I had quite a few different marks up the top of that one and so I decided to edit some out, used graffito to make cutting in kind of lighter patterns so that is like a quiet conversation in the light area um, and then made that round piece, it was like a tray, it could be copper, it could be wood and then the three uh, flowers that gave it some sort of interest coming out of that kind of succulent type plant. So that one, I just love how that all kind of came together in the end. Um, this one here, I repainted over this corner quite a few times. And then what I decided was, I actually love the olive branch being quite a feature. And of course the cup, but I wanted the eye to sort of go traveling more around the whole painting. So as much as that it's drawn down here quite strongly first, um, I think that there's enough of the swoop of the leaves pointing you up to have a look in that corner too. Um, and so it allowed me to do another abstract painting. And there's like a quietness in that painting um, where there's loudness in the foreground with the stripes and the Marameco cup. Um, there's a quietness beyond. So I quite like that it's sort of speaking to me that the person that lives in this house is comfortable with both. They have some dramatic fun and big loud contrast and they also appreciate the quiet and contemplation time as well. So that's that, those two, complete. And this is one of the last times that I will have to see all of these together. 
because that bottom one has sold. Banksia branch. So that's quite exciting. It's gone to a lovely friend down south, friend and fellow artist. Um, this is what happens when I get involved in, into a project. I end up with materials crowding in on me so I can hardly, there's hardly any space left to create in. Um, and what I'm doing now, I've got this page I just prepared and I grabbed some of these collage pieces that I cut out when I wasn't well and I was in bed and cutting out magazine pieces. And what I'm noticing is I really am excited to get back into these two. Um, but I've got anxiety over a health thing that I'm going through. And so um, I'm feeling anxious, probably a bit of fear. It's really difficult when you don't understand um, what's happening and you've got to trust the medical advice and you get differing advice from different people and different friends and different experiences and you've got to sift your way through. So I needed to pause on these because my mind is um, very distracted. So I've just laid down some color that makes me feel comfort and uh, I'm going to let that dry. I might do some little journaling on paper that I can collage in because I feel the need to lay down on my journal page everything that I'm feeling so it's got a safe place to sit and be. Um, so that's that's just what I do sometimes to alleviate the anxiety, but also feel that I'm giving attention and listening to my body. So this is a way I can do that. A favorite way to write in and put things into my art journal, I've discovered is to have narrower pieces of paper write the notes down and in this case I folded them up in half so anybody flipping through this journal won't see these personal notes not that many people do flip through my journals but it's just good to have those things in place that make me feel better and putting on a podcast um, getting rid of some of the clutter that I had around me. <laughs> um, yeah, this was right in the middle of painting those uh, paintings that this happened and I just thought I would capture it so that I could share it with you. It was really quite, it ended up being quite a very comforting thing to do, to give myself this break in trying to make art and instead use my creativity to bring me comfort and a place for my concerns and worries to go. Um, yeah, then I found the glue stick ran out, so um, that was helpful to just have the knife sitting there and scoop it out and use that um, remaining glue. Um, so yeah, I proceeded to just follow my intuition. I just was not concerned at all about the finished product of this. That's the beauty of when you just play in the art journal for, I call it self-hearing, self-healing, because you're just taking some time to hear what's going on, because your mind takes you there anyway, and it's doing, can be doing that sort of ruminating, overthinking. So when I allowed myself to write down what was I afraid of and what was true right now, I believe that's what those two sheets of paper are about. The one on the left, I said, what am I afraid of? And the other one, what is true right now? Because um, worrying about what could or might happen or might be happening when you don't actually know isn't very helpful. It doesn't take you to a nice place in yourself, which is not a, like a healing vibration that you want for your body. So I think it's really important when we're not feeling a hundred percent that um, what are some gentle ways we can tend and mend and care for ourselves so this is one way that um, 
that I'm sharing with you here. Um, because it was really related to my uterus, um, I had surgery at the end of last year. And so um, it's just sort of ongoing, some symptoms that keep going. And I, so I was making it obvious, like what, what, what was that about? You know, it was like blood, it was like the womb. So I, um, that's why I got out the red and it reminded me of blood, just that red ink. And so that was just, um, you know, just being present to what was real at, for me at the time. And so that's what I got, why I got the red um, inks out and just sposhed it all over the place. Um, and it's actually became quite enjoyable just getting lost in the creative process of doing that. So you'll see a bit later that I got some collage papers and cut out the shape of the sort of the uterus, the area of the body that this health concerns were relating to. And I think if you're a woman going through menopause, there's so much going on in our body, not just our uterus, but our brain and our whole system. Um, so I made a shape of uh, the uterus and I was using actually I had near me the brochure about the procedure that I'd had and you know the medical information so I sort of was taking that in and cut out a um, that shape and I might have to pause this and go ahead to the next part of the video because I'm recording myself speaking as the video is playing and I've gone ahead in what I'm talking about and what you're seeing. So I don't know whether to just come back into this moment and, sh and sort of say that, you know, just making lots of marks, going gently with yourself is a really, really kind thing to do. I decided to get my little art journal that I'd actually been pausing throughout the times and putting pictures to do with this same topic in here and so I was just pausing to look back so that was the shape I was getting the shape because that's what that page the original page I made when I was heading off to have an MRI and I was feeling really scared about it so I, I wrote about that in my journal and so now I'm getting that shape there from the other time that I'd done that so that I could collage onto it um, with those pretty little florals I decided that I was feeling really worried and concerned and upset about what's happening in my uterus it's been growing some big fibroids and so I thought what, are, what can I do what visually can I do and so the idea came to glue on all these beautiful florals and so bringing beauty into that um, image putting beauty all over it Again, you know, just gluing these pieces on, seeing, feeling the beauty of the color, gently, you know, just spending that gentle time really helped to soothe the anxiety that was going on in my body. So that's what I really think of this as a healing practice when you can use creativity to tune in and be with yourself like this. It's really important if you can. Or if you're drawn to because I didn't think about where I was placing those little notes then I had to sort of figure out where was this piece of collage going to go 
and the idea came to pop it at the bottom of that right hand page and then what became obvious was it became like a vase <laughs> so that, that the theme being beauty then it wanted just more flowers So I decided to fill in the whole page with the pink so I had this background and then just got my brush and just started making daisy daisy daisies which I've always loved. They are a joyful flower, they've been with, with me my whole life. Um, since I was really young I would draw daisies so that just seemed to flow out of the um, and be the next obvious thing and that's how it ended up. And it really helped transform the anxiety.